Hi everybody, it's Kendall from Sager Family Farm. Thanks for joining me today. We're gonna to be talking about garden tea. So we're gonna look at some plants out in my garden that we can brew into tea. And we're actually, since it's pretty hot, we're also gonna be making some agua fresca, um, which is a nice refreshing cold drink that we can make with some things from the garden um, and some nice fruits. So before we get started, just in case you're new here, um, I wanted to point out over on the side, um, here's a little window where you can type questions to me. You can see me, but I can't see or hear you. Um, so no one else in the class can see or hear you. So that is the only way um, you could say hi or ask me questions. I'll try to get to all the questions at the very end, uh, just because sometimes it's hard to show you guys videos and uh, images and talk and answer questions all at the very same time. So if you type it in there, I'll scroll back through uh, and make sure I get everything. And only I can see your questions, so feel free to type anything um, about the garden in here. And then sometimes I'll have questions for you. They'll pop up down here and I'll point them out when they're ready so you can answer some multiple choice questions in here too. So uh, without further ado, uh, we're going to talk about garden tea today. So like I mentioned, we're going to go through my garden and see if there's a few things that we can brew into tea. But in talking about tea, I also wanted to talk about where did tea come from, some traditions that people have about tea all around the world, and even that we might have ourselves. Uh, and then since it's pretty hot out, we're also going to be talking about agua fresca, which is um, another cool thing that you can make from your garden that is nice and cool, usually served iced. Um, so that can be tasty and refreshing for the summer. So let's start with where did tea come from? Who, who had the bright idea to put a leaf into some hot water and make it into tea? Um, so I actually have a quick little video that I found that explains uh, one of the myths behind the origins of tea, because this happened so long ago, we don't know exactly how it happened, but there are a lot of myths behind it. So here's one of them. During a long day spent roaming the forest in search of edible grains and herbs, the weary divine farmer, Shen Nong, accidentally poisoned himself 72 times. But before the poisons could end his life, a leaf drifted into his mouth. He chewed on it and it revived him. And that is how we discovered tea. Or so an ancient legend goes, at least. Tea doesn't actually cure poisonings, but the story of Shen Nong, the mythical Chinese inventor of agriculture, highlights tea's importance to ancient China. Archaeological evidence suggests tea was first cultivated there as early as 6,000 years ago, or 1,500 years before the pharaohs built the Great Pyramids of Giza. That original Chinese tea plant is the same type that's grown around the world today. So that's one of the myths from where tea came from, is that the wind blew a leaf into uh, this mythical character's mouth, and he decided that it was very good in reviving, and that's where tea came from. Another myth that I've heard that is another really common one is that one of the emperors of China really enjoyed drinking hot water. So his water would be boiled to make sure that it's very clean. And one day when he was on the move, uh, someone was boiling water for him and they didn't notice that a leaf blew in and fell into his hot water and they served it to the emperor anyway. Uh, but the emperor thought it was very refreshing and that's where tea might have come from. Uh, so everyone pretty much agrees that it came from China. So originally tea came from China and then spread all over the world. Uh, so people all over the world drink tea and actually it is the most popular drink in the world behind water. So water is the most popular and tea is the second most popular. So let me show you guys. Uh, let's go through my garden and see if there's any cool stuff out there that we could make into tea. So we'll probably be making herbal tea because I have lots of herbs in my garden. So let's start out making some nice herbal tea. So let me show you guys one of the plants I like to put in my tea. Um, so I'm growing this plant in a pot and this plant is spearmint and spearmint tea uh, is one of my favorites. And I like to snip off the nice green leaves. This has a nice minty flavor, but spearmint in particular has um, almost a sweet flavor to it, which is why it's one of my favorites is because it's naturally 
pretty sweet. Um, so when I'm making tea, I like to harvest like a good fistful, like probably two fistfuls when I'm brewing fresh herbs. Um, a lot of people make tea from dry leaves, but we're, when we're making with fresh leaves, you have to put in a lot more than you would expect. So I harvest a lot of those leaves. And one of my tea traditions is actually when I was a little girl, um, I had a nanny and my nanny had spearmint all over her garden and we would make spearmint tea. She really, really liked tea. And so she had teapots all over her house. I'm sure she had hundreds of teapots. So we each got to choose a teapot that we could make our tea out of. And actually, this is one of her teapots. And it was one of my favorites because it's a little kitty. So you can put the tea inside the kitty by taking off the kitty's head. And then you can pour it into your teacup. So that's one of my tea traditions is ever since I was little, I was making spearmint tea uh, from fresh spearmint leaves from the garden. Uh, and I got to choose my particular teapot that I got to make it in. So we're gonna make this spearmint tea a little more interesting because there's some other stuff in my garden that I think we could put in there. So let's take a look um, at my front yard. So if you followed along with some of my other lessons, you know that I have this enormous pollinator garden in my front yard. So there's flowers everywhere. Uh, so let's take a closer look in here and see if we can find something that we might be able to put in our tea. So I've got lots of those bright orange poppies blooming. But here, if we stop over here, I have a little lavender plant. And this lavender plant is actually a culinary lavender plant. So Culinary lavender is meant for eating. Some lavender is not meant for eating, it's ornamental. So ornamental means just like an ornament, it's pretty to look at, but you probably shouldn't eat it. So it's important to make sure the ingredients you're putting in your tea are edible and not just pretty flowers. So my lavender, I know because I bought it special from a nursery and it had a little tag on it that says that it's culinary lavender and it's made for eating. So not all flowers are edible, and even some of the plants in my pollinator garden are actually poisonous, and we don't want to eat them. So I plant a lot of milkweed out there to attract monarchs. So if you've been following along with some of my other lessons, you might have seen some of my monarch caterpillars. Monarch caterpillars are poisonous because they eat milkweed. So we definitely don't want to eat milkweed because we're not caterpillars, and we can't digest that stuff. So I'm making extra sure that everything I'm putting in my tea is edible and safe. If you're ever unsure, don't put it in there because you don't want to accidentally get sick. So my two ingredients so far are spearmint and lavender. So once I've chopped up some of these or snipped little pieces of my plants off, um, I always wash everything that's coming out of my garden. Um, because again, if you've seen any of my other videos around here, I have lots of animals and the chickens kick up lots of dust. And so lots of the plants in my backyard have lots of dust that the chickens have been kicking up. And so I want to make sure my herbs are nice and clean. So I always spray them down with cold water and I kind of stir them around a little bit to make sure they're nice and fresh and clean for when I'm going to brew them. So here I'm still filling up my little strainer with water, but I like to give them a little kind of wash around and then I check all of the leaves just to make sure um, that everything is looking good. And I see one question around here is, is there a way to tell if the lavender we have is edible? And I'm not 100% sure. Um, so definitely it's something that there are lots of varieties of lavender and a lot of them look pretty different. Um, so you might be able to get close, but not 100% sure. Um, so it's definitely something to kind of like look up on the internet and see if you can figure out what variety you have. But that's why I do actually have other lavender plants that I got from cuttings um, and little startups from other people. But this is the only lavender plant I eat because I specifically bought it and it had a tag on it. So I know exactly what type of lavender it is. So I think many other types of lavender are actually edible, but it's something to double, double, double check. Um, so definitely 
look it up. But there's no 100% way to be sure because it is really hard. It's hard for me to identify all the different species of lavender. So once I've washed all of my lavender and spearmint, now we can actually brew it. So we use hot water when we brew it. So I have this nice glass teapot so that we can see what's happening inside of here. And I'm gonna put all of my leaves um, and my lavender inside of the teapot. And then I'm gonna add boiling hot water. And the boiling hot water helps infuse the water with the flavor of the spearmint and the uh, lavender. So and I'm gonna let this one, since these are fresh leaves, I'll let this sit here for about 15 minutes in order to get all of the flavors in there. You can even kind of stir it and mush it around a little bit because this releases some of the juices from the leaves and gets it into the water a little bit better. So that way when we drink the hot water with our uh, lavender and spearmint in it, it's actually tea. So we're gonna let that sit for a little while so that it steeps. Uh, some other ways that you might have seen of making tea, you can actually take tea bags and put them in your water and then put them out in the sun because the heat of the sun can help infuse that tea into the water as well. You can make iced tea, but it makes a it takes a lot longer if you use cold water. So you usually let it sit for quite a long time. If you're using cold water, the heat really speeds up the process. And then I did this a little bit ago. So my tea is already ready. <laughs> So it took about 15 minutes and then I'm going to put, I have a little strainer top that goes on top and this acts kind of like a tea bag. So it makes my whole teapot into a giant tea bag and it filters out the leaves. So I only get the fresh clean tea in my teacup. So here if we take a look, you can see the water has even changed color a little bit. So it's a little light greenish pale yellowy color and that is from the mint and the lavender that are in the water. So that is one of my favorite teas, but you don't always have to drink it plain. So I like to drink that one plain, or sometimes I like to put honey and lemon in it. So that's another really tasty way to enjoy the tea. So I wanted to show you guys um, another type of tea that I usually make from a tea bag, but we're gonna kind of examine what are some things we can put inside the tea and how that might change the properties of that tea. So let's take a look over here and let's take a look at how the light passes through the tea in each of the different phases as we make it. So here, I'm gonna start with my hot water and just pour hot water into my glass teapot. So this hot water is kind of steaming up my camera a little bit too. So it's very hot water and I just boiled it and I actually have a question for you guys, and it will pop up down here. And we're gonna think about how light passes through this. So uh, hot water or water all by itself, uh, is it transparent, translucent, or opaque? Um, so these keywords, transparent, means light can pass through it very easily, we can see straight through this material. Translucent usually means some of the light is a little bit blocked, so we can still kind of see through it, but not all the way. And then uh, opaque means no light passes through this, so we cannot see through this object. So is the water transparent, translucent, or opaque? So this one, I didn't, for the other videos, I waved my hand underneath, but this one, I think we all kind of know what water looks like. If you've been in a pool, a glass of water, something like that. And it looks like most of us have said that this water is transparent and that is correct. So we can see totally through this water. So let's add our tea now. So this one, I'm using a darker tea bag so that it can get a little bit darker. So let me show you guys what happens when we add some tea to this water. So I'm using a chai tea, which has some black tea in it, along with some nice spices. It has a nice like kind of cinnamony, spicy flavor to it. So I really like chai tea. So now I've got another question for you guys. And let me pop that up here. 
So what do you think the T is going to be? Is the T transparent, translucent, or opaque? So here, oh, the tea bag is blocking it a little bit. So I'll move the tea bag and then wave my hand underneath it. And you can see, you can still see my fingers. So you can still see my fingers a little bit. They're a little bit obscured. So the cutting board underneath the tea, you can see that the tea is really this brownish orange color, but you can still see some stuff through it. So is the tea transparent, meaning totally see-through, uh, and all the light passes through it. Transparent, meaning some of the light passes through it, so it's a little obscured, or is it opaque? So it looks like we're we're kind of having some, some battles. It looks like half of us are saying translucent and half of us are saying transparent. So transparent, the water was completely transparent. We could see totally through it, but the tea, it's a little darker, so it's starting to block some of the light. So we can still see through, see things through it so the t is translucent so it lets some of the light through so now there's some extra things that we can start adding into our t so let's take a look at the next thing i usually add into my chai tea is actually honey so i get lots and lots of honey from my honeybees, and I like to drink a little bit of a sweeter chai tea, so I'm gonna sweeten it with some honey. So we'll take our honey, which also looks to be a little translucent, so, because we can kind of see the tea through that honey as well. So I'll uh, stir in a teaspoon of the honey, just to make it nice and sweet, and make sure it's all stirred in and all dissolved in there. And let's see what our tea looks like now. So I think I'll pass my hand underneath it. And the tea steeped for a little bit longer. So you can still see my fingers. Now they're starting to get a little blurrier. So we can still see my fingers through the tea and the honey. So we're still translucent. So that's still translucent. But now let's add some milk to this. So I really like milk in my chai tea. So this makes it really tasty. So this is one of my favorite ways to drink uh, chai tea. So how about now? So I've got another question popping up down here. Is tea with milk transparent, translucent, or opaque? So I'll stir all of that milk in there. And now I'm gonna pass my hand underneath the teapot and I can't see anything. So I can't see my fingers through that milky tea at all. So is it transparent? like the water was? Is it translucent like our tea or our tea with honey was? Or is it opaque, which means we cannot see through it at all. It's blocking all of the light that's passing through it. So it looks like everybody is weighing in that it is opaque now. Um, so that is how our tea can change a little bit based on what we're putting in it. And those are some of the most common things to put in our tea. So we could put in honey or sugar to sweeten it. And a lot of people put in milk. So let's take a look. Um, I showed you guys some spearmint tea and some lavender tea, but there's actually a lot of other plants in my yard that can be used for making tea. So let's explore a little bit and see what else could I put in tea. So since there are some plants that we can't put in tea, so over here, I've got um, my three hanging baskets so that my sheep don't eat all my tea plants. Um, but this one is lemon balm. This is another really tasty uh, herb. It looks kind of like the mint, but it tastes like lemon. This one is stevia. So stevia is actually a sweetener. So instead of honey or sugar, I could actually take some of the stevia leaves and put them in and they will sweeten my tea. And then this one's not ready. Um, for making tea just yet, because we don't eat the leaves here, we eat the flowers. So this is chamomile. So those are little flower buds, and when they bloom, they're usually harvested. And this is a really popular one. If you've ever had sleepy time tea, it's often made from chamomile. So there's a lot of different reasons to drink tea. And in the video we were watching about the British tea, they even mentioned that tea was mostly drank for medicine. So there are some herbs that you can put in tea, like echinacea, another really beautiful flower. You can harvest its blooms, and that's supposed to be good for respiratory things. So if you have a cough or a cold, 
then it's really nice to drink uh, some echinacea tea. So there's actually some healing properties with different teas. So it's usually drank for people's health. So let's take a look at some other things that I might be able to pop into my tea. And these ones I usually use as a garnish for um, some iced tea. So I'll put them in at the very end. But there's actually a lot of edible flowers out there. So I have two varieties of violets. So I think this one is, I think it's a tiger eye violet. Uh, but this one is an edible violet. And then so is this one. This one is, I think it's like a karma blue butterfly violet. Um, but the flowers are actually edible. So you can put them on a salad or I like to kind of put them in an iced tea pitcher because they look really, really pretty. Um, so they don't add a whole lot of flavor. But I think part of the experience of drinking tea is how it looks. So that's definitely another way that you can um, put some things into your tea. Some things that I don't have growing quite as large, there's lots of other plants like lemon verbena, which this is a plant that the leaves also taste like lemon, kind of like lemon balm. And that makes a really tasty tea. Um, another one, uh, lemongrass. There's actually a lot of really lemony flavored things that I really like that I will be planting in our garden soon. But another thing to be careful of is not everybody can drink every herb. So like I said, tea can be medicinal. So some people with compromised immune systems, um, so maybe someone who's pregnant, shouldn't eat all of the herbs. So it's important to check which herbs are safe um, and which ones shouldn't be eaten at certain times or for certain types of people. Or if you have an allergy to certain plants, then obviously you shouldn't put that in your tea. So um, even if it is a safe plant to eat, it might not be safe for everyone. So it's always important to check. Um, students, check with your parents to make sure it's OK for you to uh, eat this. So always ask an adult. And adults, you can look on the Internet, usually has a lot of information about herbal teas. So let's see. Now I want to switch over to making some agua fresca. So agua fresca um, translates basically to um, uh, a like a fresh water. So it's very tasty. It's very refreshing. And let's take a look at uh, some agua fresca that I actually just made. So this is another thing you can make out of your garden. And uh, the ingredients I'm using. So I'm using some watermelon for this one. So we're going to make watermelon basil agua fresca. And so I've got about a cup of watermelon that I'm putting into my blender. And watermelon uh, it can grow here, but it's not ripe yet. So I had to buy my watermelon. But a watermelon is certainly something you can get out of your garden. I like my agua fresca to be very sweet. So I added in a tablespoon of sugar uh, into my agua fresca. And now I'm going to blender the watermelon and the sugar together to blend it and make it kind of a drinkable thing. So it doesn't take very long to blender it because watermelon is very, very soft. So I kind of shake it in to get all the sugar in there. And then I've got my iced tea jar that I'm going to put my basil in there first. So I got some basil out of my garden. And this adds a little bit of interest to your agua fresca. So it's not just sweet. It has a little bit of that savory basil taste. I put in a cup of water and then I put in some lime. So this nice tartness um, pairs well. So if you have a lime tree, in your yard, this is another thing you can get out of your garden. Um, so that's why this is a nice garden drink, but it's very, very refreshing on a hot day because it's been getting pretty hot lately. So now let's add in our watermelon. Um, but to make it really a nice, smooth drink, you can use a fine strainer and you can pour the watermelon into the cup there and then the pulp. So any of the bigger pieces will stay behind. So I like to stir that a little bit and encourage the watermelon juice to go into my pitcher. And this makes a really beautiful pink drink. Um, so it makes it look very, very pretty. And then the basil leaves inside of the pitcher also look pretty in addition to adding some taste. So now that I've got it strained out, I also have a strainer top to my little teapot, as you guys saw before, that kind of turns my whole teapot into um, a giant tea strainer. So this one has a finer strainer. So sometimes it doesn't pour quite as quickly 
I think we'll oh, have to move our camera so I can see under my arm. But here, so it's straining a little bit, so it's going a little slowly. But this makes a really, really tasty agua fresca right out of our backyard. So it's just using watermelon, basil, lime, um, a little bit of water. So all things that we can get in our garden or from our kitchen. And then some sugar if you want to sweeten it even more. So this can be a really nice, tasty kind of garden tea, but agua fresca. And you can make agua fresca with all sorts of fruits that you can find in your garden. So I've also got strawberries growing out back. So that would be another really tasty one. And I actually made that right before we started. So I still have some of my agua fresca here waiting for me for when I finish class. So let's see. I think I got through everything so let me take a look at um our little uh like our chat window so if you have any questions you can ask them over here again only i can see your questions let's see how do i think tea was discovered hmm let's see because there are a bunch of myths and i think i believe the one where the leaf blew into the hot water a little bit more so i think that one seems more like that seems more like how tea was made is that like a leaf in hot water um, as opposed to um, some guy sitting out in the forest and then a leaf blew into his mouth and then he decided somehow to make it into tea. But a lot of the myths kind of revolve in that uh, zone. So I think that a leaf blew into some hot water and that might have been tasty to someone. So that's the myth that I think is more likely. So let's see, um, why do people normally just consume leaves in tea and not other things? So the leaves, I think they have a lot of flavor to them, but there's also, as you saw, a lot of flowers that are consumed for tea. So, and there's actually even roots that are consumed for tea. So like I showed um, in one of my earlier videos, chamomile. So once that starts to bloom, chamomile tea is another tea echinacea tea so that is the flower that is a little medicinal like you drink when you're sick so those are some flowers that you can drink in your tea and then for roots um the main root that i know of for making a tea is ginger so uh, i actually usually if you have an upset stomach you can actually have some ginger tea so you can slice up the root of the ginger plant and put it in hot water. And then I like to add a little bit of lemon and that can help settle an upset stomach. So um, the leaves were probably the first thing that were made into its tea. But since then, there's lots of other stuff that can be made into the tea. So there's definitely flowers and roots that I can think of that go into tea as well. Let's see. Uh, it looks like. Oh, how many types of tea are there? Ooh, I don't know the answer to that, but my guess is thousands. If you ever go into a uh, like a tea store, there's all these different teas lined up on the wall. Um, so lots of different ingredients can be made into teas and different teas can be made with different combinations of everything. So there are lots and lots of different types of tea. Oh no, it looks like maybe one of the videos didn't play. It played It played for me, but it also I was having some troubles with the English tea video. Um, so if you didn't see the English tea video in this little segment, so the English tea, it got to England from one of the English queens. So a queen uh, from Portugal, she actually married, I think it was Charles II um, in England. And so she became the queen of, uh, all of Britain. And then, um, so since she's the queen, a lot of her traditions, she brought tea with her from Portugal to England. And since she's the queen, everyone wants to be like the queen. So all of the nobles in the British court want to be like the queen of England. So she would drink tea and uh, so a lot of the British nobles started drinking tea and then a lot of the British people started drinking tea. But not only did she bring tea, she brought some of the tea customs along with her. So some of the tea customs she brought along with her is the kind of the concept of tea time. 
where you would have some pastries, scones, a little bit of a snack. And this is usually done in the late afternoon. So usually for me, it's around 3 p.m. Um, is when I would have uh, tea with my stepmom. So that is a nice tea time. So in the afternoon, when you need a little pick me up, that's usually when I drink afternoon tea. And it's when a lot of the British people drink tea. Um, so it's very, very, very common in Britain. So that's one of their ceremonies, a kind of a tradition for them. So let's see. I think I got to all of the questions here. So awesome. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching my garden tea video. Next week on Tuesday, we're going to do another caterpillar update. And then on Thursday, I'm going to do an open farm questions class. So um, if you have any questions about any animal on the farm, I'm going to do instead of in my office here like this and with some pre-recorded videos, I'm going to be out back with all of my animals. So if you have questions about any of my animals, you can ask them to me next Thursday. And also as an added bonus, I want to see some of your guys' pets. So if you have a pet that you want to share with me, um, Send me a picture of your pet and tell me your pet's name. So I'll keep it anonymous whose pet is whose. But if you want to share some of your pets with me, I would love to see a picture of your pet so I could see what your little farm looks like as well. So and next week is going to be my last week of classes for the school year. So I'll take a tiny little break and I'll still post some videos over the summer, but I'll still take just a little tiny summer break for myself as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye.